Hey everybody, um, welcome to my very first YouTube video. I apologize ahead of time, but hey, no one's holding a gun to your head. Uh, today I thought I'd do a little bit of inking. This is a commission uh, that uh, my client got from Paul Pelletier. He's doing a sweet daredevil sketch here. So I'm going to do my best not to ruin it. Uh, I thought I'd go over a couple of things that I do when I'm inking. I have people ask often. I tend to ink mostly with a brush. Um, I do straight lines and such with micron pens. But for this little bit, I thought I'd show a little bit of what I do uh, with the brush. And so first off, the brush itself is a Kalinsky Raphael number one. I'll show you the writing, but it's mostly worn off. Um, sometimes I use a number two. Uh, I'm trying to get a little bit finer with my stuff, so I've switched to a number one. But the beauty of a brush is that uh, when making lines that I want to change the weight on, you can see Paul is a very tight penciler, so you can see here, thick to thin, thick to thin, thick to thin. If I want to do that with a micron, I'm going to sit there and draw the outline. Sit here, draw some more, build it up. Do the same thing here, down here. With a brush, I can make this line, this line, or the whole thing if I really want to get crazy with one stroke, just varying the pressure at which I'm applying the brush. So the first thing we need beyond the brush is ink. And I tend to use this stuff, Speedball Super Black, um, when I can get it. <laughs> Sometimes I'm using just regular India ink. Uh, I've got some Pro Art stuff here. And actually, as I get low in the Speedball, I tend to use this little dropper and just fill it back up. So it's sort of a Frankenstein of Speedball and regular India ink at this point. Um, and then to prep our brush, we want to make sure that it has a really good point on it, right? So we don't want, this is okay, you probably can't see, but like if it's just, if it's like this, we're gonna be in trouble, aren't we? Yeah, fine for the blacks, maybe. So uh, disgustingly enough, the best thing to do to get a point on a brush like this is to stick it in your mouth and twirl it on your tongue. <laughs> Works every time. Now, to maintain this point, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna see if I can show you this real quick, is I move Daredevil, and I have a scrap piece of paper, my ink pot, right? and I'm gonna dip in here, and I'm gonna try not to get to the metal jacket of the brush. I just want the tip to have ink on it, and I use this paper to help the ink spread through the bristles of the brush. When you're starting for the day, it's gonna take a dip or two. And then you'll notice as I do it, I'll try to slow it down here. I'm twirling the brush. And then as I pull it across the paper, I lighten up. And that's when I get this thinner line here. Okay, twirling the brush. So it still has a point on it. Okay, so let me get these back over here. I have this stuff sort of off to my right side because I'm right-handed. And like I said, this is my first go around here, so I'll try not to be too all over the place. But when I ink, I tend to go to different spots in the drawing when I'm comfortable. Um, so I'm just gonna start right here. And always start lighter than heavier if you can. Like this is a pretty strong line right here. But when I start placing it, I am not going whole hog like I'm painting the barn here, okay? Now, granted, this area is going to be black, right? So this line weight is gonna be less relevant than 
it will be for areas like this right here, okay, D's under his chin, where there's not black on one side. But I tend to still ink it like it's going to be an outline because it keeps me in practice. So it's not necessarily a bad thing to still ink as though the whole thing is just going to be color. Okay. Wetting my brush again. The light's coming from both behind Daredevil and up. You know, this, he's standing on the edge of a building, you know, surveying the city. And the street lights and whatnot are cast up upon him. If I were inking this like the light was coming from here, I would want to make sure that this point on his shoulder is thinner than down here or down here. It's just an example. Um, like I said, in this case, he's the black is just going to go right up to here, but I'm still going to do it like it's not, like I said, because practice. Okay, if you use everything as an opportunity to practice, you're going to see gains a lot quicker. Okay. Um, so, like I said, like here, I know that would be a point where, I'm just refilling ink here, that would be a point where this this point would be thinner because the light hitting, I want to emphasize the point. And then I push down a little bit. And here, same thing, a little thick here, pull out and lift up and then push down again, okay? That's what I love about a brush, okay? I, I've got to work for a bit to get that with a pen, okay? Um, the other aspect of inking is you always want to be turning the page to present the best angle from which to ink. Okay. I didn't want to just, um, it's going to be tough for you guys to see here. I tend to do slightly better when I'm pulling towards me as far as controlling the thick to thin. Uh, going away is a little bit trickier for me. So that's why you'll see, if you ever watch me ink anything beyond this, I am constantly turning this page back and forth, back and forth to give me the most comfortable angle. Now, another aspect of inking with a brush, let me get in here, that is important to learn, in my opinion, is learning to draw with your shoulder as opposed to your wrist. See right here, I'm just going with my wrist, stopping here. And then starting up again, I'm going to pull it a little thicker. And then a little thin, a little thicker. If I have a very long, like if I were to try to do this all at once, it's going to look bad. If I have a big, long outline, oh, I'm screwing up the focus. If I were to do, like say this was an unbroken line here that I wanted to do. If I were to go like this, adjust my wrist, this, adjust my wrist, okay? Every place I stop, there's gonna be a little artifact that tells you I stopped. If I ink with my shoulder and I don't move my wrist, I'm just pulling my whole arm with my shoulder, I'm much more likely to get a continuous line that looks smooth and unbroken. So that's just another tip. I'm really kind of frenetic, so they'll they'll just. <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you stuff as I think of it. Um, so like right here, this is a pretty thick line. What I'm gonna do is make it thick up here, thin it out a little bit down here, and maybe just a tad. And this is all you know degrees. I say thick to thin to thick. We're not talking about you know sharpie level stuff here we're talking about trying to get fine and to be honest i am a bit of a ham-handed inker so for me to say that even it's kind of a big deal because 
uh, I have in the past been a little bit on the chunky side with the inks. Okay. The beauty of Paul's stuff here is, you know, he's, he's very tight. You know, there's not, there aren't a lot of wasted lines. There's not a lot of guesswork here. Yeah, he's got a little bit of blue line on there. But he's very much penciling to the inker, if that makes sense. He's, he's used to other people inking his work, and he draws with that in mind. So while I was initially, like, panicked to work on this piece, uh, it's nice that it's balls because, A, um, I already talked to him about it and he's interested to see how it might look and B uh, it's he doesn't leave much for me to have to interpret or um, you know try to make sense of you know some pencilers <clears throat> myself included uh, can be a little bit sloppy and sketchy and that's where your anchor really comes in and saves the day. Um, for me, it's more of I, I ink my own stuff. So uh, I'm not going to draw it super tight just to ink it. Um, yeah, so uh, let me know if you guys have any questions. Um, and if this wasn't too unbearable, I'll try to do something uh, a little bit more, a little bit longer in the future. All right, thanks for watching.